Welcome back. This is Code Ajit, your best friend in programming. And in this video, we will learn how to load up configuration settings in a Blazor WebAssembly app. First, why do you even need configuration settings files? Well, that's the right place to store information that you need to have to get your application running. You can put things like your database connection strings, SMTP logins, API secrets, and other such details in there. If you need to decide upon what to put and what not to put in a configuration file, the rule is simple. If the information will never change, don't put it in the configuration file. In that case, you should store it in a constant or as a constant in your project itself. But if the information will change sometimes, it's info that you expect to eventually change when something changes and outside resource changes, then you should put it in the configuration file so that you can keep the application running by just swiping out the file and not having to replace the entire app binaries. All right, so let's get started. Now, a Blazor WebAssembly app is actually two applications. It's gonna be a client-side app, that's the actual Blazor app and also a server side app. The beautiful thing is at the server side, you can have practically anything running. You can have a Node.js backend, you can have a backend that's on PHP, but mostly because we are in the .NET world, we will have a, a backend that is made using .NET 2 because that's practical after all. You want to use .NET on the front end, you want to use C Sharp on the front end probably, then why don't you use it in the backend too? So you're gonna have probably an ASP.NET Core backend. In this particular video, I'm going to talk about configuration files both for the client side and the server side. By convention, the configuration data in ASP.NET Core and Blazor is stored in a file called appsettings.json file. Now, if you create a new Blazor project like I have over here, it's a WebAssembly project with the ASP.NET Core backend, you'll have three projects and the server side project will be called .server and inside that you will already see an appsettings.json file with some data in there. And in the client side project, you won't find an app settings existing already. So you got to create one. And in the client side project, the app settings needs to go in triple W root folder. So we're going to add a new item, new app settings file. It's a JSON file. Let's call it app settings.json. That's all you need to do. And now you have an app settings file that is available inside of your client project too and anything that you put in here will be available to your entire application. Let's put in some data over here, name. Here we've got the settings. The test project has some random data, so let's clean it up a little bit. We don't need the survey prompts and other components. Let's create a new component here called settings. And in here, let's create a table which will hold our data. Let's run this project and give it a check. All right, so we have settings, but nothing is showing up over here because we've created the component, but the component is still not included in the index page. So let's just include it Let's put the settings tag over here. You can see that I got IntelliSense. And now if I go to my page, I will see that the settings table is here and I didn't have to recompile or rerun the project. So Blazor has actually live reloading and most of the time if you make small changes, if you're not changing anything that requires a recompilation, you should be able to just see the changes on your browser right away. So we got to get the values now. We don't have them yet. And to do that, we will use a technology called dependency injection, which is a part of Blazor by default. Blazor pulls the configuration in the app settings into an iConfiguration object and makes it available in the entire project using dependency injection. And it, this is done all on auto. You don't need to do anything to make it happen. All you need to do is just call the settings on your page. So on this page where we are actually using the settings, what we're going to do is we're going to use an inject directive. Inject is a directive that will bring a dependency injection object to this component. It will make this dependency object available to the component. The object we want is of type iConfiguration and let's call it configuration. 
and now we can use the configuration object on this page so let's just put in the real data you can refer to it using the add symbol add configuration and then you can put in the setting name that you want to pull so we want to pull the name age profession and as you can see this data is now visible on the page itself we are pulling it from the app settings file in the www root folder it's pulled automatically by blazor framework you don't need to write the code to actually pull this data into the i configuration object it's all done on auto it's a part of the basic framework and this is available to you all over the project you can inject it into any component using the at inject uh, pattern and if you want to use it in a class then you have to use constructor injection i'm going to show you very quickly how constructor injection works so we're going to add a new class to this project let's call it test.cs and we've got this class over here now in a class you can't put an at inject directive over here this won't work what you need to do is you have to create a constructor for your object and then inside you have to refer to an i configuration object and you can then assign it to a local variable if you want to refer to it or if you want to use it in other functions let's call it config that's it so now config is available to you inside the class in any method and property you can also store complex objects in your app settings file for example i can create a person object like this and move all of my data inside the person object so all the settings that i had earlier they are now a part of the person object and now when i go to my page the settings page i can just refer to the person object like this and then reach the setting inside it using a colon and similarly we can also get the age the profession and you can nest this as deep as you want you can see i still have the data i can even go deeper than this let's say i had another setting called employment i can make this another object and now this will be available as a nested object and then you can refer to it inside of your project like this and position so then this data will be available to you we are nearly at the end of this lesson but before i go I want to tell you about the different versions of the app settings file. Right now what we have here is the default app settings file, but you can have different versions according to the coding environment. For example, right now we're in the development environment, so let's just copy and create a new file and let's call it app settings.development.json. You can see that this automatically appears as a child in the project hierarchy to the appsettings.json file and this is the file that will be loaded instead of appsettings.json file in the development environment. Similarly, you can also have a production version. Uh, that, that's the version that usually goes live on the server. So you have now got three different appsettings.json files, appsettings.json default, the development version and the production version. And according to the environment that you are in that the project is running in the correct app settings file will be loaded let's see an example of this let's change the things around a little bit in my development or json file let's do a couple of changes and now when we run the project you will see that instead of the data coming from app settings file which obviously has different data we are getting the data that is in the development version of the app settings file so you can use this system to create separate settings for the production environment and the development environment this way you can have separate settings and environment for your project without having to change things around a lot so when you ship it when you publish the project the production version of app settings is going to run automatically and in your dev environment the development version is going to run if you don't put in the development and the production version of app settings all the data will be pulled from the default app settings.json file the app settings file in the server side project of your blazor solution also works just the same obviously we don't have any front end pages or razor components in there you can retrieve the configuration inside any part of the project using constructor 
injection. So for example, if I wanted to get access to the configuration in the weather forecast controller, which is already over here, what I needed to do was create a constructor of this particular class. And inside we're going to have I configuration, configuration object, and then we can apply it. We can assign it to a local object. And now this is available to you inside of the action methods that you have. For example, if you wanted to retrieve the configuration in the get, get action method, you could just do this. And there you are. This is how configuration works, both in the client side project and the server side project of your Blazor solution. All right, this brings us to the end of this lesson. I hope you had fun and you learned something useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and Check out my channel for other videos on programming. This is your best friend in programming, Kodajit, signing off.